Hi, I'm Ovidio from WP Codebox and in this video I'd like to introduce the new WP Codebox IDE plugin. The WP Codebox IDE plugin is currently in beta and it's only available to WP Codebox users as an LTD. So let's look at what the WP Codebox IDE project does and how it can help you while working on WordPress site. So the WP Codebox IDE is a plugin that allows you to modify your site's code, uh, write new plugins or make changes to existing plugins. It also includes a file manager that allows you to manage your files, download files, zip them or move them around. So let's look at first at the UI. We're welcomed by this welcome screen. Here on the left we have the file manager of the of the current WordPress install. Uh, we have the option to live preview the site and the changes here. We can turn this off and on. Uh, and in the plugin settings we can change the font size, the editor theme or whether to show or hide the minimap. This is for now. For external access settings, we'll get to that later and I will, will explain how that works. So I will close this down for now. So yeah, this is the file manager here on the left. It's completely resizable, so you can make it as wide and as narrow as you want. And this will get the width you set will be kept when you refresh the page. So here we have our car current site installations files. We can open files, open folders. We can, for example, download the folder from here, or we have a context menu here that we can do the same. We can, for example, compress a folder. We see we have the theme here. Let's delete that. Okay. We can move files around. So let's say we want to move this styles.css to this folder. We just drag it and here it is. Let's move it back. Uh, we can also download plugins. So here we download this current plugin. We can upload files, upload zips and then unzip them if needed. We can also deactivate and activate plugins from the IDE directly. And we can generate our custom plugins when we can put our custom code. We also have a search feature that will search in the current selected folder. So for example, if we search here for absolute path and we search, we can find, we can see the results and it will open the file and go to that line. Okay. Uh, the settings, I went over them. This is the live preview. Uh, here we can see live changes as, as we change the code. And uh, he, this icon allows us to log out from the IDE. So that's about it about the interface. Let's look at some things we can do with the IDE. So let's look at generating a plugin. We can click here to generate a plugin. Uh, these are the defaults. You can change them. The plugin name, plugin description, author and version. We also have the option to generate a CSS style sheet, a CSS style sheet, JavaScript if you need it, and more advanced an auto loader. But I will get into that later. So let's say we want to generate a CSS style sheet and a JavaScript file. We click generate plugin and then we can see the plugin file is open and we can see here the plugin has been generated. Now, if you want to, let's say we want to work only, only on this plugin, we can right click and set it as our dev path. And now we, we only have the files in our current plugin. We can go back if we want and see, see the whole, whole file structure. So let's set it as a dev path. As you can see, it generated the action to include the CSS. This will be the file that will be generated from our SCSS file and to include the JavaScript file. So let's write some SCSS to see how this works. So let's say the H1 should be red and then save it. And as you can see, we can see the changes here in the live preview. Let's say we want it on hover to be green. green. Save it again. And as you can see, when we hover it, it's green now. So this is how SCSS work. This SCSS file will be compiled in the styles.css file. 
So, okay, this is how SCSS works. And now if you want to write our custom code, we also have the WP code box autocomplete out of the box. So let's say we want to add a filter. Let's say we want to change the title. The title, as you can see in, uh, in the ID and in WP code box, when you write add filter, you get a list of all WordPress filters you can use. So we search for the title, we do it. And then we have the option to generate the function that will handle this filter. So we click and that's it. It has been created. So you can see it automatically knows that it takes in the post title and the post ID and it should return the post title. So now if you want to modify our post title, we can do something like the post title equals my custom post title and concatenate it to post title and when we save we can see the changes here that are modified by our, by our filter okay now let's go back if we go back and deactivate our custom plugin you can see the the changes are reverted because our plugin is not active anymore okay let's go ahead and activate the plugin again so this is mostly how generating plugins work this is a really powerful feature if you want to to get more into writing your own custom code and writing your own conditions and writing your own actions the same as filters we have autocomplete for actions also let me show you that so for example let's pick an option an action we have the option to generate the function and it knows that it takes a wp comment object as a parameter so yeah this is really powerful when writing the wordpress code once we write our plugin we have the option to download it so if you go here and download it we'll get the plugin file that we can install on our live site or wherever we, we want it also generates a javascript file as i said so if we go here we can write our custom javascript here and it will be enqueued here so let's look at some wp codebox id use cases for example editing the theme.json file uh, on this site we have the 2024 theme active and uh, we generated the 2024 child child theme the, this one is currently active and here we can overwrite all our um, theme json from the main theme so if you go to 2024 and open the theme.json there is a lot of of json code here but we can overwrite everything in our child team so let's say we will want our paragraph blocks to be red we add this code here and we'll overwrite our parent themes and all our paragraphs are red now so this is really useful if you want to get into full site editing or if you want to learn more about blocks and how theme.json works basically this could replace css and it's more integrated with gutenberg than uh, than plain old css another interesting use case is that we can write our custom uh, gutenberg blocks using a custom plugin and acf so in this example i created the my custom blocks plugin and i activated it here we regi register the blocks and then in the folder we define here we have the block.json and the php file that renders the block for now is just a h1 but if we go to gutenberg and enter our new block we can see here the the testimonials block let's save this and then go to the front end and then if we open the page we can see my our custom testimonials block we can make changes here to the block and we see how it's rendered here so yes this is really useful when you run, want to write your custom blocks and there are a lot of tutorials online on how to do this and maybe I'll go further in depth in future videos. Another useful use case for the WP Codebox IDE plugin is for example running uh, plugin conflict checks. So in our setup now we have this header, this heading here. We have our title that is 
modified and it has a custom post title be before it and we have the red uh, the red headings so we might not know which plugin is doing this so normally you would run a plugin compatibility check but in our case if you have the idea we can disable really easily disable plugins one by one and we can see we disabled advanced custom fields pro and uh, our custom block disappeared so we can activate it again now we see our block back again back here now let's deactivate the our custom block plugins again our block disappeared let's activate it again and then we can deactivate our custom plugin and as you can see the headings are not red anymore so we know this plugin was causing the issues the issues we were having this is just a small example and maybe the real life cases are more complex but this shows you how easy it is to activate and deactivate plugins one by one in the IDE. So let's have a look at the external access settings. The thing is that the WP Codebox IDE plugin runs in independently of WordPress. It does this because in case you do something that would break your site, you can still have access to the IDE so you can fix it. So for example here we can set a username and password to, to enable external access using this URL. Uh, when you you'll notice that when you download the WP Codebox ID from your WP Codebox, Codebox account, uh, the core folder here will be a random folder. So each time, um, each time you download the plugin, the inside of it will be in a randomly named folder, so no one can access it if he doesn't know that folder name. This is just an extra layer of security, but it's not what makes WP Codebox ID secure. So for example, here, if you set an username and password and save the settings, settings saved, then we can open this URL, let's copy it. And then if you, if you open that URL directly, you can log in using those username and passwords without having to touch WordPress again. So this works completely outside of WordPress. Uh, ideally, it would be good to set a username and password here and copy this access URL in case you do something that breaks your site and you need access to the IDE. So yes, this is an overview of the WP Codebox IDE. If you have any ideas of new features or interesting use cases, please let me know and I try to introduce them in the next videos. Thank you.